Hello, my favorite undefined behavior part two, Russell's paradox in C++. Last year on this stage, I show you my favorite undefined behavior is on YouTube. Check it out. I create an example using my favorite undefined behavior where adding static assert change the runtime behavior of the program. So, but this year is another rather interesting example. So here it is, I just include type traits, then I implement my own is convertible trait, which just derives from a standard one. Then I have some struct X, never mind this code for time being, and I have three lines of code that I comment out, but I'll put them back in. But so far, the three major compilers are really happy. So let's put back in line 18, and now the three compilers are complaining. And they are complaining about this exact same thing, that std is convertible, X int is undefined or is incomplete. But how come? It's too disconvertible. It's in type traits. How come it's undefined? Never mind. Let's go and put back in line 17, which contains an static assert. Did you see what happened? Do you realize what happened? The code didn't compile. I added an static assert, and now it does. I'm sure you have seen the other way around, but this one, probably not. So, but let's carry on and put back line 16, where I try to convert an X to an int. But line 17 is telling us that X is not convertible to int. So line 16 should not compile, but it does. So what's going on here? What kind of undefined behavior could make the compilers get so lost? Any guess? See? No, no, it's not that. It's ODR violation. But what does it have to do with Russell's paradox? Let's recall Russell's paradox of C if you don't know it. So in other versions of set theory, they contain this axiom. Given a predicate P, there exists the set of objects satisfying P. Let's call it A. And everybody thought that was really reasonable until the Welsh mathematician Bertrand Russell came up with this example. P of X means that X is, doesn't belong to X. So if you apply the axiom, then the set A does exist, and it's a legitimate question to ask, does A belong to A? Let's assume that A belongs to A. So if A belongs to A, look at the definition of P, it means that P of A is false. But now look at the definition of A, if P of A is false, that means that P, that A is not a member of A. It's not, it doesn't belong to A. So in summary, we conclude that if A belongs to A, then A doesn't belong to A. And similarly, we can prove that if A doesn't belong to A, then A does belong to A. So that's a paradox. It was a moment of crisis in mathematics, but it was quickly resolved. So, and now, what is the connection between this and C++? So, here is my X. I have a converting operator to T, but it's only there, so if it's there, then X is convertible to T, but it's only there if it's not finished out, so if some condition is true, which condition could be that? Come on, Bertrand, let me show them. That's the, con that's the condition. So if it's not convertible, if X is not convertible to T, then we add operator, then X is convertible to T. That's a paradox, very similar to what uh, Russell came up with. So don't use that, this is an ODR violation. And you might be thinking, come on, but what my intention is, if it is not convertible, if the compiler doesn't know how to convert X to T, I'm going to add this, uh, this functionality and tell the compiler how to convert X to T. And you might sometimes think, yeah, that's usable, especially when you do use customization points in some libraries, you might be thinking of that. Be really careful, that's undefined behavior. Thank you very much.